fixing, fixing, fixing things. Yeah. Here's the goal. Uh, we have one Mega Drive Model 2 here, uh, which at the moment is suffering from no power at all. There is just no life there. Uh, likely problem is a bad uh, DC in socket. Uh, so we're going to have a look at that, uh, just check that the soldering's okay, and then uh, repair that if that is the problem. Fingers crossed it is, otherwise there's going to be more trouble. So the ultimate goal is to play a bit of the old EverDrive. So here we go, step one, disassembly. So here we are, I've also got a new tripod, which uh, I thought I'd just give a bit of a try out. So first step is four screws in the base. Good old Phillips that'll do the job. So once you have the four screws removed, put them aside. Flip it back over and the lid should just pop off. So if we look at the date on the uh, the cover there, you can see this one is a uh, 94 month two, so February 94. It's the manufacture date of the plastic, which is usually pretty close to the manufacturing date of the actual unit itself. Next, we've got a whole bunch of screws holding down the EMI shielding. So I'll go through and remove these. Keep them separate. To the uh, external screws though as they are a little bit shorter. Just lift that away, be careful not to cut yourself, those things are sharp. And then you can immediately see the, uh, the main board itself. And just have a poke around, make sure there's no obvious damage. Uh, mine's actually got a... This is probably one of the newer, newest Mega Drives I own. So here's hoping I can get it up and running. Um, VA1 Manufacture date on some of the chips. We've got 93 week 39, 93 week 38. So that gives us a time frame. 93, 31. So late 93, popped into a case in early 94. So uh, once you've got all those screws out, the short ones, uh, you can then remove two cartridge slot ones which are the longest of all the screws. Obviously with uh, people using cartridges you want that to be quite secure otherwise the board will flex around quite a bit. Uh, and you just pop the base away somewhere safe. Now someone asked me the value of the capacitor on the base the other day, the back there, and I didn't actually know myself so... 10 volt, 47 microfarad, there you go. Now we know. Whether it's the same across all models, who knows. So we've got one board. And the part you can have a look at, I'll see if we can get this in focus. It's around that, that jack area there, those three solder points. I don't know if you can see that, but that uh, that middle one there doesn't look too healthy. The two ones on the side are joined, so they're... They should be okay either way, but that one in the middle 
doesn't look too good so let's go ahead and uh, get the soldering iron out and give that a bit of a reflow see how we go here we are back again you can actually see it quite well from the side there the uh, sort of break in the solder so got my trusty soldering iron red racer which is a what do I use 40 watt maybe a bit too much heat but I don't care um, damp sponge is always a good idea just wring it out as hard as you can use it to clean the tip of your soldering iron and of course solder so the trick is just to simply melt in some solder so I'll just do all three of these because it never hurts to reflow a joint especially if one of the points is showing stress simply heat it up add a bit of solder and you're on your way it's uh, pretty simple in fact it's so simple as long as you know how to solder actually this is a great way to learn soldering what am I talking about Of course, you don't want to create a short or anything because uh, being where it is. Whew. Right on the power adapter, it will fry your power adapter pretty quick. It will start a small house fire, you know. So you just make sure that point is nice and melty. And the ones around it. Once well, so that is done, uh, it's pretty much just time to give it a test. So let's uh, just jump over to the testing station. I'll just give you a quick close up of that reflow joint. As you can see, nothing spectacular, but that's the way we like it. Never hurts to get out a multimeter and just check the continuity, make sure that there is no short between any of those. Well, except those two, those two will have continuity on the outside. But uh, let's hook it in and see if we get any life. Fingers crossed. All right, walked into power now. It's just a... Uh... Red light. Red light means good. Don't like the way the uh, screen was flicking then. Let's see if we can get a quick look at that. No signal. Should be getting some signal. Ah, it's all good. Let's put a game in there and see what happens. Mega Everdrive. Or Everdrive MD. I don't know. I've got one on order and one already here. Yes, that worked well. Ah, oh, good old white screen. I think I reseated it even worse than it was reseated. Let's try reseating it again. Fifth time lucky. No signal. This can't have been the worst $7.50 I've ever spent. I'm going to pick a different game. Let's go with uh, Pack Panic. Had a go at that today on the uh, Amstrad Mega PC while I was testing out my 
uh, what was it, the 15 kilohertz uh, video adapter. Which worked, but I uh, didn't get any audio because audio is routed through the something or other. Oh, that's not good at all. That just made it twice as exciting. I love secondary faults. It's actually probably just the cartridge slot that needs to be cleaned. So while I'm busy getting no signal, I'm gonna clean out that cartridge slot. Stay tuned. One thing I thought I'd just check while it's uh, on and randomly resetting is the uh, the voltage output from the uh, voltage regulator which is a relatively easy test you just pretty much uh, take your black probe and ground anywhere around the outside and uh, just start tapping very carefully 4.92 volts 0 8.15 so the 8 is the input so it's putting in 8 volts fine and it's stepping it down to 5 volts which is expected that's what we should be getting on this because our circuitry is 5 volts so why it's doing things like where'd it go must be camera shy I oh, know we've gone back to no signal um, the good news is, is that I do have a spare Mega Drive which had other issues, not similar to this, but issues um, that I had to scrap it for. So I might try pinching some parts from that if need be, but I'm going to have another go at that cartridge slot cleaning which I said I'd do but didn't. So uh, I'll be back in a second. Well, don't ask me how, but it started working. I've only got right hand, the right hand speaker though. So, yeah, let's, oh, let's jiggle it, see what happens. Definitely getting some uh, mixed results here. Almost convinced it's the actual cartridge slot itself, so I'm just going to give that a little bit more of a scrub just to see uh, see what we can get. 
Well, I've gone through and I've uh, sort of wedged the pins out a little bit so that they uh, have a bit more force behind them. Um, so we'll give uh, Pack Panic a go again. First time. Oh, stereo sound. So looking pretty good. Um, let's give what the original goal was, a uh, bad apple. Here we go. Part one. Through the Everdrive. Oh, look at that. First time. Everything's working. Uh, we're using a quick shot controller here. This is a very basic looking controller but it is amazing to use. Uh, picked it up with the, the Mega Drive actually for a couple of dollars extra. So it should already be preloaded. That looks like it's working. Success! So, as you can see, nothing's impossible. And uh, Mega Drives are exciting. So, there you go. Um, just have a quick game of Pack Panic just to show the true processing power of Mega Drive Model 2. I don't know, I'm a bit uneasy the way it works that well now. Oh, that's loud. Don't judge me.
Got a bit distracted. It's a very good game. Uh, thanks for watching anyway, and I uh, hope you learned a couple of things. Uh, with every one of my videos, I hope someone learns something, even if it's me, who learns that uh, rejiggering the cartridge port can sometimes actually help. I did also clean it out with a bit of sandpaper, uh, just to clean up any corrosion if there was any. Uh, didn't seem to be any in there though, it just seemed that the uh, the pins inside the cartridge slot were a little uh, little far apart from perhaps overuse, which would also explain the uh, very loose uh, DC in socket. Uh, if that was not loose, I would assume that it had just been sitting in a cupboard since the day it was bought. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, hit me up with any questions in the comments if you have any. Um, also, don't forget to like the video. Um, subscribe again if you haven't already. Uh, <laughs> let's see if we can get uh, 200 subscribers to uh, this cavalcade of retro entertainment. And uh, who knows, one day I might actually get a chance to start going through the games I own instead of just using them as test cartridges uh, for, for various uh, repairs. Um, still got to work on a fair few things, so don't worry, there's, there's always things up and coming. My house at the moment is a complete mess, uh, but you know, it's the way you'd want it to be. What I was doing is uh, I was trying to rearrange my bookshelves with all my console junk on them. I can actually just swing around and give you a quick look. Uh, let's just zoom out here. So as you can see, the TV's now here instead of over here and over here. Don't worry, chicken's still up there for everyone who, who might have been missing. This new tripod's pretty fantastic. Uh, but the two bookshelves now sit side by side and uh, dominate the lounge room. And I've got my lonesome chair over there, which uh, needs to be replaced with a decent couch. But I'm also trying to work out how to rearrange these two, two bookshelves to best hold my collection. I'm thinking to put Ah, hell, I'll do another video in a second about this. Thanks for watching. Subscriptions are free for a limited time.